Hello everyone and welcome to a new Sega Mega Drive Genesis game dev tutorial. Today we're going to cover how to do basic enemy AI using a C programming concept called function pointers. If we click over to our enemies.c file you can see that at the moment we have this manage enemies function. Inside this function is a for loop where it loops through all of the enemies in our current enemies array and any ones which are not inactive it will apply this very basic AI. And all this AI does, it adds velocity x to the x coordinates and then it updates the sprite position. The problem with this of course is the fact that it uses the same AI routine for every single enemy. Whereas what we need is we need a unique enemy AI for each enemy type in the game. The first step in fixing this will be to go to our enemies.h file, go down to the very bottom and we're going to create a function for each of the enemy types we have. So we have four so far, we have the boomerang enemy, the basic ninja enemy, the stealth enemy and the sniper enemy. So let's create a function for each of the AIs. And as usual when writing the function prototypes within our header file, don't forget to put the extern at the very beginning. You can call these whatever you like of course in your own game, I'm simply going to write the enemy name followed by AI as a kind of pattern. For these enemy AI functions we're going to need to put something in a bracket so we're going to need when we call the function we're going to need to feed it some information. Now the information we need to give it is the uh, enemy number in the current enemies array. So that'll be anything from 0 to 9 because our current enemies array at the moment it has 10 entries. I'm going to call this parameter the enemy number but feel free to name it whatever you wish and I'm going to make it a U8 number, an unsigned 8-bit number. And if we switch over to our C file you can see here our current enemies array. And if we go further down to the manage enemies function you can see that again we have this for loop that goes from 0 to 9, it cycles through that array and it manipulates the data within it. Now this i which represents from 0 to 9 the, the main loop, this is pretty much what we're going to feed into our enemies functions, this is going to be the enemy number. And don't worry if that doesn't make sense then it will do shortly but first of all let's go through and let's create each enemy IR, one for each enemy type we have in the game currently. Okay so that's the function prototypes done, now we need to copy these over to our C file and now we actually need to write the content of the functions themselves. In the future of course we're going to have proper AI for each of these enemies, we're going to need to analyse what they do in the original game, how some of them react to the player, some of them have like a set routine but for now let's just copy over the simple AI that we were using before within our manage enemies function. Instead of this I which we use to iterate through our for loop we're going to replace that within our AI functions with the enemy number instead. I'm going to go ahead and do the same for each of our enemy types but I'm going to change it so sometimes add the you know the x velocity, sometimes a minus x velocity, sometimes I'll change the y coordinates instead and so on. As I said before in future lessons we'll do a proper enemy AI for each of the enemy types but for now this will do. Next up we're going to go to our manage enemies function, we're going to delete the code that was in there before which basically just used the same AI for every single enemy and we said we need to make it so that it changes which AI it uses depending on the enemy type. So if the enemy type is the boomerang guy then it uses the boomerang AI, if it's the stealth ninja it uses the stealth ninja AI and so on. The most obvious way to do this will be to use some if and else if statements so that's what I'm going to try first. And while looking at these functions I just realised I forgot to delete the extern so remember we only need to put the extern in the function prototypes in the header file, we don't need it in the C file so we can get rid of those. So back in our manage enemies function if the current enemy type is the boomerang enemy then obviously we're going to want to use the boomerang AI and remember with each of these AI functions we're going to need to feed it one parameter, one piece of information and that is the enemy number. Remember I said before the enemy number is simply the position of the enemy within our current enemy array which will be the same as I within our for loop here. And I'll now do the same for the three other enemy types too. And at the top in our current enemies array let me just add a bit of variety to our enemy type so we can see different enemies displayed on the screen. Okay with that all done I think we're finally in a position to save and compile so let's take a look. If we look at the compiled ROM you can see that it all seems to be working well except for the um, boomerang enemy you see that two of them are moving forward and one of them is moving backward and I think I know what the issue is here. If we take another look at our enemy AI functions you will notice that the boomerang AI for example is adding vel x to the x coordinate and within our current enemies um, array you can see that, that the x velocity was defined differently for different 
enemies, but even the same type of enemy, sometimes we assign it to minus one, sometimes minus 0 0.1. When we come to do our enemy IR properly, we may not even need a fill X field within our current enemies array at all. But for now, let's just change this fill X of the boomerang AI with a fixed number instead. So I'll do it fix 32, input whatever number you want here. I'll do 1.5. So instead of using whatever is in the current enemies array for that, it's simply going to use a one point. It's going to add 1.5 to the X coordinate of the boomerang enemy each turn. And while I'm here, I can make the same change to the basic ninja AI too. I can give it a, a certain number. It's going to change each time. Instead, this time I'll make it 2.5. And after saving and compiling, you can see that that issue has now been fixed. The boomerang enemies are all moving at the same speed. And before I forget, let me do the same for the sniper AI too. We could in theory leave things as they are now because it's all working fine and if we take a look at our manager enemies function again you can see that we have these four if and else if statements and having only four of them is not too many but if you imagine that you have a game where you have maybe like 50 ais that's a lot of if and else if statements so i have an alternative method which i'm going to show you now and it's here but we're going to be using function pointers finally since the AI function is a permanent feature of any particular enemy type we're going to put it into our enemy type struct and the syntax of a function pointer is exactly as I have written here. I know the syntax might look a little odd and ugly because of the new brackets and the star. So just for comparison, let me copy and paste the um, function prototype of a regular function next to it. If we compare the two, we can see that actually very similar. So first of all, we have what the function uh, returns. In this case, void is nothing. Then we have the name of the function. Then in the brackets, we have any parameters it takes. The difference, of course, is the name we've given the function pointer is encompassing these regular brackets as well as having this, you know, this asterisk, this star to the left hand side of the name. As you know, in this tutorial series, I've really tried to avoid any kind of uh, technical programming language jargon with my main focus being on how to practically implement various features of a game. What I definitely recommend, especially at this point, that you start to study regular C if you haven't already. And if you haven't, you've still followed along to this point, then congratulations, that's been a really tough job. But um, so feel free to look up what pointers and function pointers are in your free time. But uh, for this, for the purposes of this uh, tutorial, simply make sure you copy this kind of syntax. And of course, instead of calling it enemy I, you can call this fun function pointers, whichever name you like, but make sure you have the brackets and make sure within those brackets to the left hand side of the name you have this asterisk. Of course the whole point of adding this function pointer field to our enemy type struct is to be able to add the enemy IIs to our enemy types list. Remember this list is an array of the enemy type struct. We can now go ahead and we can add the name of the AI for each corresponding enemy. We can now go down to our manage enemies function and we can delete those if and else if statements and replace it with something a little bit more elegant. What we wanted to do instead now is to simply look up whatever the enemy type is in the enemy types list and use the relevant AI function. And when selecting the enemy AI field, don't forget to do the open brackets and put the I in too. And remember that this I simply iterates through the current enemies array and that's going to replace the um, enemy number in our AI functions. And if you wish to simplify it further, you can delete those curly brackets since we're only going to be using one line of code within the if statement. So now our manage enemies function looks like this. So just as before, we're going to create a loop that's going to iterate through the current enemies array and then any which aren't inactive, which are in the game, is going to use the whichever the corresponding um, AI function for that enemy type is. After we save and compile, we should get this result. And if all that's working okay for you, congratulations. And I hope you enjoyed your first foray into function pointers. We've actually covered quite a few more advanced programming uh, concepts in the past few weeks with, you know, structs and arrays of structs and now function pointers and so on. But it's all important as we build the foundation of our game. I think it's going to be a lot of fun when we start to finally program some real enemy, reactive enemy AI, both for the bosses and the regular enemies. But for now, we're going to continue to build our foundation of the game so we can lead up to start putting new backgrounds on the screen, as well as dealing with how to load in new levels. 
Okay, that's it for this session. Thanks very much for watching. And if you enjoy this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm interested in this. And if you'd like to support my work further, as well as get um, access to a download link of the code used in today's lesson, then I put my Patreon in the video description below and any support is much appreciated. You won't go unrewarded. Until next time. Farewell.